In study, we had uh, looked at how often are patients with cardiacil misdiagnosed with MS. So we had a questionnaire sent out to about 50 patients with cardiacil who were all confirmed on uh, by genetic sequencing regarding their diagnosis. And 29 of these patients uh, initially had a diagnosis given that was not cardiacil. So that's about um, almost 60% of patients were not diagnosed as cardiacil to begin with. Of those 29, 20 were diagnosed with MS um, and that diagnosis stayed with them for an average of about four years before somebody revisited the diagnosis and thought about cardiacil as an alternative diagnosis. Of those 20 patients, um, I think 11 were offered treatment for MS, three deferred treatment, but eight were treated uh, with MS modifying uh, agents for again for an average of about uh, three years. Uh, before the uh, diagnosis of cardiacil was revisited. In fact, I have a patient um, in our cohort who was in a double-blind randomized uh, control study for MS as an MS patient and uh, he developed further complications at which point the diagnosis was revisited. Therefore, it appears that uh, misdiagnosis with MS is uh, considerable in case of cardiacil and um, that this should be looked at further uh, in order to prevent um, unnecessary medication or treatment in these patients. So cardiacil is really difficult to diagnose because at each, each phase it re resembles another more common disorder. So somebody has migraine in their 20s, uh, it, it's a very common disorder in general population. So to suspect cardiacil just because you have migraine is a little bit of a stretch unless somebody really pays attention to the family history, that there are other family members who are affected either with dementia or with strokes, or that the migraine is either progressive in the sense that, at least in my experience, uh, patients begin with a, a migraine with aura, but as time goes by, the migraine becomes a little more, um, a little more complicated in the sense they have more phenomena associated with the migraine. They may get confused with an episode of migraine or they, uh, it becomes more incapacitating uh, as time goes by. Uh, it may become, it may last for a longer duration. Uh, several of patients have speech difficulty associated with migraine and so on. Uh, so unless uh, special attention is paid to that aspect of uh, uh, that the migraine is changing its uh, character. Several patients will get an MRI uh, in this day and age for their complicated migraine disease and if it shows white matter disease out of proportion to what is expected for a patient with migraine with aura, then maybe that uh, should lead them to suspect uh, cardiacil. In the, when, when patients start presenting with their strokes, again it's the same uh, sort of uh, concept because now these are focal neurological deficits, meaning they have weakness in an arm or weakness in a leg, difficulty speaking. They'll get an MRI and the MRI will show white matter disease beyond expectation for that person and that age. And the natural conclusion is that this is an MS looking MRI and this episode represents an attack of MS. And it's not to say that, um, it, it's really difficult because the mimic is so close. Uh, until somebody really pays attention to the family history, I would say the first generation family history, it is a very close mimic and sort of a difficult diagnosis. If the patients have bypassed this and they simply present in their 50s with dementia-like presentation, at that point, the white matter disease may be attributed to age-related white matter disease, though it is still out of proportion for their 50s. But, at, but it's just simply a mimic of vascular dementia. So somebody has hypertension or diabetes may get pictures similar to cardiacil 25 years into their disease, which is by their 70s or you know, uh, later in life. Therefore, there is, at each stage, cardiacil has a mimic of its own and uh, that makes the diagnosis very difficult.